In this video by the World Health Organization, we will demonstrate how to collect oropharyngeal and nasopharyngeal specimens by health workers for the diagnosis of COVID-19 in adult patients. Start with performing hand hygiene, either by using an alcohol-based hand rub or soap and water before donning personal protective equipment. Please follow the how-to guide on the World Health Organization website. Required personal protective equipment for the collection of respiratory samples includes a gown, a medical mask, eye protection, and gloves. Ensure glove is placed over the cuff of the gown. Donning should be performed according to the institution's own standard operating procedures. Before proceeding to collecting the samples, make sure you have the following. Laboratory request forms according to national or institutional guidelines. Patient labels for the specimen collection vials or alcohol-resistant marker. Tongue depressor. Pen light. Specimen collection vials with 1 to 2 milliliters viral transport medium or other solutions such as sterile saline as per your laboratory's instructions. Sterile Dacron or rayon swabs. The type of swab used is very important. Only sterile Dacron or rayon swabs with aluminum or plastic shafts should be used. This is because calcium alginate or cotton swabs or swabs with wooden sticks may contain substances that inactivate some viruses and inhibit PCR testing. Furthermore, flexible fine shaft swabs should be used for nasopharyngeal sampling. When sampling the throat, swabs with a rigid shaft are preferred. Further, you need leak-proof small plastic bags for specimen collection vials or other packaging materials for transportation of specimens, biohazard bags, scissors, tissues. In an outpatient setting, the patient should be asked to perform hand hygiene before entering the test area. Also, the patient should wear a medical mask in order to limit the potential for contamination of the surroundings. Fill out the laboratory request form and labels for the vial. It should include date, the patient unique identifiers, the sample type, and any other required information. Pre-printed labels should be used whenever possible to label the files that will receive the sample appropriately. Give the patient a tissue paper for drying of the eyes and nose if secretions appear following the procedure. First, collect a throat swab. Explain to the patient that you are going to take a sample from his throat and through the nose and that he may experience slight discomfort for a few seconds. When collecting the samples, stand slightly to the side of the patient to reduce the risk of droplets or splashes from hitting you if the procedure causes the patient to cough or sneeze. Make sure you are aligned with the height of the patient so you can easily visualize the oropharyngeal wall. Remove the swab from the packaging and open the lid of the viral transport medium. Ask the patient to remove the face mask during the procedure. When taking a throat or nasal swab, the shaft must be held correctly. It should be held between the thumb and the first and second fingers with the shaft protruding beyond the web of the thumb like a pencil and not between the thumb and forefinger with the base in the palm of the hand. This will prevent the swab from causing injury if the patient makes a movement as a reaction to the swabbing. Ask the patient to open the mouth and say, ah, so the soft palate will rise and improve visualization. You can now see the anterior pillar of the pausis and the posterior pillar behind with the uvula in the middle and tonsils between the pillars of the pausis. In the back, you will see the posterior oropharyngeal wall from where the specimen sample should be taken. Insert the swab without touching the tongue and gums. Now rub the swab over both the tonsils and the posterior oropharyngeal wall with a rotating or painting movement. Withdraw the swab without touching the cheeks, teeth, or gums. If visualization of the posterior oropharyngeal wall is obstructed by the tongue, Use the tongue depressor to provide a better view. If there is too little light, use the pen light to improve visualization. Place the tip of the swab into the vial and aseptically break the shaft at the marked weak point or cut with a scissor to an appropriate length. Throw the shaft in the bag for hazardous waste and tighten the screw cap firmly. Now perform a nasopharyngeal sample using the flexible fine shaft swab. Remove the swab from the packaging. 
open the lid so the swab with the specimen can easily be submerged in viral transport medium. Ask the patient to lean the head slightly back. The swab should now be inserted with a direction down towards the earlobe so it will follow the floor of the nose. Insert the swab gently about 8 to 11 centimeters in adults to reach the posterior oral pharyngeal wall where resistance is met. Leave the swab in place for a second and rotate it three times. Withdraw slowly with a rotating motion. It is a common mistake to point the swab too much upward toward the turbinates. If resistance is met prior than expected, the swab should be withdrawn and a new attempt is made to insert the swab with the direction changed down towards the earlobe. If unsuccessful, try the other nostril. Now, place the tip of the swab into the vial and aseptically break the shaft at the marked weak point. Throw the shaft in the bag for hazardous waste and tighten the screw cap firmly. In order to save equipment, the same specimen collection vial with vial transport medium may be used for both the nasopharyngeal and the oropharyngeal swabs, and the same swab, preferably one with a flexible shaft, may even be used to collect samples from both sites. Ask the patient to put the medical mask back on, verify that the specimen collection vial and the form are correctly labeled, and match the patient's identity before the patient leaves the room. Ask the patient to perform hand hygiene either with alcohol-based hand rub or water and soap before leaving the test area. Package the specimen collection vial according to the national or institutional standard operating procedures. One way is to put the vial directly into the small bag without touching the ladder on the outside. Then take off the gloves and discard them in the bag for hazardous waste. Perform hand hygiene and put on clean gloves before closing the bag and proceeding to package the sample. High-touch services, including the chair and exam table in the area where the patient was sitting for the procedure, should be cleaned and disinfected in between patients. Also, make sure that all other single-use items are appropriately discarded and any reusable items are wiped down, such as the pen light, scissors, and any other materials that were used. Correct doffing of personal protective equipment is essential in order to reduce the risk of infection and should be performed according to your institution's standard operating procedures. Ensure that the personal protective equipment is discarded appropriately. Finally, send the specimen collection container to your laboratory as quickly as possible according to your local standard operating procedures. If transport to the laboratory is delayed, place specimen on ice or in refrigeration between 2 and 8 degrees centigrade and follow the instructions from the laboratory for appropriate storage. In this video, we have demonstrated how to collect oropharyngeal and nasopharyngeal swabs for COVID-19 diagnostic testing using the appropriate technique and in infection prevention and control precautions. For further guidance and updates, refer to the World Health Organization website.